We welcome to the show Tiber of the Jewelers. How's it going? I'm all right. How are you doing? Yeah, very good. We're enjoying your new album. You're good. Good. It feels like ages ago that I was writing those songs. It's been out a little while, but um, I'm sort of now my brain's on to the next lot of songs to write. So, um, yeah, it don't feel so new to me anymore, but um, I'm glad you're enjoying it anyway. Oh, yeah, we definitely are. It's new on the show. We're really enjoying it. My favourite tracks on here are definitely um, I'll Take You Over Anybody Else, yes. Carolina, and Stop Waiting for the Curtain to Fall. They're oh, my favourite for it. Some people, I think that's possibly my favourite is I'll Take You Over Anyone Else. Um, so, yeah, it's um, glad you picked that one out. So, you mentioned about this album. It's been out a little while, you said. What can you tell us about it for anybody hearing well, it for the it first was, time? it was my first attempt. My brother, I mean, we called the Jordas, and he was two guys, two brothers, and we used to do our thing for a long time, and then he, he, um, I, the, I wanted to sort of really define the direction of the band by going into ska and reggae, and he was very much, you know, a bit of a school, old school rock and roll, do what, Lindy Hop sort of vibe. And uh, I just said, well, look, you know, I think we need to sort of make sure which, you know, choosing the direction we need to go in. And um, I was sort of obviously far more pro the Scarm Reggae. And I think after a couple of years of, of me dragging him along, he just said, you know, I'd like to branch out and try something. And uh, eventually he got a bit of a name for himself on, the, on that scene and left. And um, so, yeah, it was, it was three years in the making. But he was before that, he was a songwriter in the band, if you like. I was... I'd gone to drama school and stuff like that. I mean, I'm musically minded, but I'm not sure I even trusted myself to come out with an album which I thought was uh, going to be credible. So it took me three years to sort of put it together, and I just sort of I set the standards quite high, and I thought, no, this is my first attempt at doing something entirely on my own. So I wanted just to sort of show everyone, and more than anything else, myself, that I could do it. And, yeah, I'm pretty pleased with it. It's obviously, you, you never are 100% pleased with an album. I've, I've been told that many a time by many artists, but... Um, yeah, I, I, I've sort of learned a lot from it and uh, looking forward to getting my teeth into the next one. I guess that's a good thing, though, isn't it? To never be pleased with what you've done because then hopefully no, you can I think, better it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think, you know, the, the part, the, part of the reason we do it is, is, is you know, it, it, it pays our bills. But it's not. it should never be the central reason. I think if you lose focus of that, then we do it because we love it. And, you know, I want to listen to my music and not think how much money a certain album or a track has paid me i look at it and think well it's my art and i want to sit back and listen to it whenever and be proud of what i've done so um yeah it's been a it's been a good journey so far and it's quite a long process isn't it making an album i think a lot of people don't realize do they how long it can take yeah well it it depends really if you're a record company you've got to meet targets and deadlines and stuff like that and the same for us because obviously i'm Everything I had to do, I had to hire, you know, studios and get the band in and, you know, that was all costing. Um, so, um, no, it, it, it sort of, it, it sort of took me about three years in total to do it. But, um, yeah, you never, ever can tell when it's going to be. I think I probably gave myself a year at the beginning and all of a sudden it went to the second year, into the third year. It was just... Um, but, I'm, it, you know, it, it had to be that way. I'd never done it before, so now, certainly this time round, I'll, I'll set myself a deadline to be a bit more realistic. So you're working on some new songs then? Yeah, I haven't started yet, believe it or not. I mean, I've started at, at home on my own, but as far as developing it with the band and taking it to the next level, I haven't done that yet. Um, the great thing is we play the O2 and various other big venues in around the southeast, and it's always a good place to showcase them and... Um, Luckily, we've got a nice fan base, so even if it's not so good, they'll probably still cheer it. But, um, yeah, it's it's. I think that's what's so great is because we do everything ourselves. It's a great way of really sort of testing out, you know, what songs work and, you know, how well the band can play them and, you know, how receptive the, the, the public are going to be to it. So Yeah, it's, it's good that you can do that with your fans, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's, it, you know, it, it, uh, I don't know how many other are. I mean, once you've got a fan base, it's fine. I guess someone like Coldplay can come out and play anything, you know, now, because they're Coldplay, and that's as long as they don't stray too far away from that. And it's the same for us. But still, I'm a musician, I'm a fan of music, and a fan of reggae, and ska, and rock steady, and always will be. And that's at the core of everything that I do. I, I always ask myself, would I like it? If I don't like it, chances are it's probably never going to see the light of day, to be honest with you, or I won't play it. 
which is ludicrous to do that. You don't want to spend, you know, loads of money on a track that you don't like and then you never play. It's just, especially with this music, because essentially, it's, you know, reggae and ska is Jamaican soul music. It's got to come from, you know, within. Um, yeah, very much so. And yeah, you wouldn't want to record something you didn't like. <laughs> no, well, I've done it. I've done it. I mean, and I think a lot of artists have, and I think you have to go there to realise if you don't like it, then you know, you're not going to play it. And I get a lot of people come up and say to me, can you play this, can you play that? And, you know, I do a lot of the time play songs to people that they want to hear which I don't like. But, you know... If I'm Everybody's set, different, aren't they, though? Everybody yeah, likes yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to be and... able to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to be able to give people what they want, but, you know, it's so nice for them to ask for something that you absolutely love and it's a pleasure to play it, then, you know, it's kind of like a match, match in heaven. So your next going to be in our neck of the woods on the 3rd of December at the Indigo O2 in London. Indigo O2, yeah. We play every year. It's just by far the best gig we do. We know them. They know us. We bring in a lovely crowd. It's about 2,000 people, seating and standing tickets, and the tickets been on sale now for about a couple of months. And I think um, yeah, we've already shifted quite a lot. And it's just become a regular thing. And if we don't do it, they just we'd be inundated with complaints. People make a real weekend of it. You know, wherever they were coming from, we have people travelling from Germany and Italy, booking to a hotel. You know, listen, it's the O2. It's, you know, you, you get what you pay for. It's not cheap, but... A great it's, venue, it's, yeah. It's a great venue. You know, you, you, you don't get trouble there. It, it's just a, and a really nice crowd. And... You know, I can sort of understand why people book up as early as they do because I've seen tickets sort of selling quite quickly. I don't even know where I'm going to be on the 30th. Well, I do, obviously, I'm going to be at the gig, but I couldn't book that far in advance because my life is just so hectic. And But, you know, it, it, obviously, it's great for us to see that a lot of ship tickets have already been shifted. Um, but, yeah, so we're back there, 3rd of December, um, and each show, according to a lot of my close friends and family, just got better and better. So I look forward to topping the last one, which was a great one. Well, I think I'll come along as well if I can get a ticket. It sounds like you a very good day. can, gig. indeed. <laughs> you, you, did you leave me up for that? <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they all planned. No, no, listen, you, you play our music in all radio stations. I, I'm, I'm absolutely incredibly grateful for, you know, it's not just the genre of music. It's us doing it ourselves. You know, we, we've gone down the route of record companies and managers and agents and pluggers and all that sort of thing. And not for want of trying, but, you know, we've always just found that we end up doing things better ourselves. And, um, you know, it, it, and, and obviously it costs an arm and a leg to have those things in place. And, you know, and if it doesn't, they take a lot. So it's just kind of sort of... So for us to be having radio stations like Your Good Self and other people that are playing and promoting our stuff, I'm, you know, internally grateful. And obviously by showing that, happy to chuck some comps over to you and, um, yeah, see what you think. Yeah, I'll see you there. So, Tyber, off of your new album, I'm going to play one more track off of it. What okay. would you like me to play? I've already played Ooh. Carolina. I like that. Like, you're the first person asking, asking that question. Did you say you wanted to play Carolina? No, I've played it already. You've played it already. Okay. If I'm, if I'm listening, if, 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 the, the, the absolute overall choice of song of the album that everyone always requests is Red Light. Um, but that, I mean, you know, I like it, obviously, but it's not necessarily my favourite. But um, so, if given the choice, and we want to keep the listeners, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure, yeah, that's, I'd that's probably good. go. I'd probably go with Red Line. Brilliant. Thanks a lot for joining us on the show, Tiber. Listen, it's been an absolute pleasure, and I hope to see you down at the uh, O2. Definitely. Great. All right then. Nice one. Take good care. You too.